it's me, Gary Lee Stanley, your sales guy. How are you doing today? <laughs> today we're talking about our favorite subject, which is sales. All right, we got a cool one, so let's go ahead and dive right on into it. What is our cool subject for today? Our cool subject for today is what it was like my very first year selling real estate. Okay, I'm going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the warts and all, and I'm going to tell the truth. It was hard. It was tough. It was rough, and I'm going to tell you why. I enjoyed every minute of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, and like I said, the warts and all. You know, I got an opportunity to get my license on Friday the 13th. Okay. Two days later, a pandemic came down and visited us here in Jacksonville, Florida, and it closed pretty much every single thing down. It was crazy. People were scared. And here I was with my license. So what would I do? How could I survive? I wanted to go ahead and be a real estate sales guy. And so what happened was I I started interviewing people. I did. I called on 10 different companies and they all said the same thing you know uh, well right now you can train and learn and do all kinds of stuff but you know you're not going to really have much chance to be able to do any open houses or anything and I'm like I don't even know what that is yet so the key to success was when I first got you know my license and everything I was so stoked I was excited I was happy but I was scared too and come to find out I didn't know a lot and I did some interviews like I said I did 10 interviews I did some zoom ones I did some in-person ones I did some over the phones and you know everybody was wearing their mask even they were wearing their mask when they were on zoom yeah okay you're just saying and then I got a can't an opportunity to work with this cool company called exit real estate gallery right here in Jacksonville Florida I had a couple of great uh, big companies by three of them who all said the same well hey go over there and get your good training and, and come back and see us in a couple of years. I'm like, really? <laughs> I felt like, dang, man, they must know their stuff. So I talked to a beautiful woman. Her, her name was Diane Cook. She was awesome, man. She was just like my mentor. And she told me all about the company, the, the, the way it works, and, you know, how they work, and all this good stuff. And, you know, the camaraderie and all the stuff that they have available. But their training, oh, my gosh, was very, very intense. They had some great training. So I decided. Well, Gary Lee, let me pray about it. And that's what I did. I got on, I started praying about it. And then God said, well, you know, you got to give one of these guys a chance. So that's what I did. I gave Exit an opportunity. And I had to do an online course. Uh, generally, they did it in person. But <laughs> we ended up having to do it over uh, the Zoom thing. And it was cool and sunny, uh, sunny down. He was a great guy. He's the guy who, he's one of the owners. Ray is also the other owner of the company. You know, they did their online training and stuff, Zoom. So it was pretty cool but see everything was locked down so you really couldn't go do much and we were locked down for about a month and a half or maybe maybe a little bit longer if that you know so what I did was I went out and pretended I went and went over to an Aven the Avondale area which is a very exclusive nice community and they had a beautiful park out there called Boone Park and I went out there and walked around the neighborhoods and practiced zooming and acting like I was selling <laughs> and walking people around these beautiful luxurious homes and Gary Lee was practicing. But also in the first year, I got an opportunity also because of the downtime to take my 45 hour of continuing education. That's one of the things you're going to have to do. So you might as well knock it out of the park and get it done because you're going to have to do that with by the end of the second year. And it goes real, real quick. So do yourself a, a, a due diligence. Knock that thing out. Plus, I also had to, my first year, I mean, I literally took hundreds of hours worth of classes. Exit had their, you know, their onboarding stuff, which was really important. They ba they basically taught you the fundamentals, the basics, but you got to go to all these classes and stuff. Because see, in, in, when you take that sixty three hour course, you learn you learn about ethics and you learn about some basic stuff. When you take the forty five hour continuing education class, you learn about contracts, how to talk to people, what things mean, and so forth. You get a little bit more detail, so you might want to get that knocked out so you can have a conversation with a customer don't go, oh, uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> but see, also, like I said, we they had continuing education. And see, after after that month and a half was over and everything, they said, hey, well, you know, we can finally start doing some open houses. And you know what? I did. I did a bunch of open houses. And you say, well, why, why would I want to do open houses? Well, that gives you the capability to talk to people, learn your trade of selling, to get yourself an opportunity to get referrals. You know, and you got people coming in to look at these beautiful homes. And at that particular time, you know, things were a little bit slow, but we had, you know, you'd have maybe four, five, ten people come in and look at a home. Everybody was masked up. They were all wearing their garb and cleaning. We had clean supplies. So you had to make sure you were wearing a mask and so forth and social distancing and all the good stuff. It was not scary, but it was crazy. And so I also went and did door to door. I knocked on doors. I farmed some communities and I did those open houses and I'd walk around the neighborhood and say, hey, we got an open house coming up this week and I got some opportunities where I got some telephone numbers and addresses because you learn how to do that in your first year if you're lucky when you do that so you have what they call a sphere of influence so people you can call on and say hey I know you were looking for a house that particular may not have been the one for you but we can go ahead and look at some houses that are in the community they're in the same price range so let's go ahead and set an appointment and that's what I did and I was real fortunate I got up with this one couple they were really nice and they had kids and they were looking they called me up and said we like your spice we like the way you act we like how your personality is you gave us a chance to look around you weren't real pushy and you were real nice and so I was <laughs> so they gave me a chance to be able to sell and so we went and looked and I had this other couple they did the same thing but the lady wasn't as nice as the other couple and she knew a lot about you know buying houses and stuff because when you first get into the business guys you don't know much and some people may know more than you some of the customers may know more than you that may treat you a little bit with a little bit of disrespect and yes i did i had one that treated me really bad we drove all over the place and they decided to go ahead and get somebody else who was a little bit more knowledgeable to go ahead and walk them through the process now i ain't saying it's the right thing but that particular salesperson uh, they talked to they knew they had somebody else but that's okay people get a choice to be able to choose who they want and i kind of hurt my feelings a little bit because they ended up ghosting me and uh, the lady i called her back a cup about a month later and she says well we went ahead and bought this other house and i'm already i'm trying to get my real estate license because i told her she should try to get her real estate license because she knew more than i did that was embarrassing but like i said guys you gotta start somewhere remember i told you i'd tell you the good the bad the ugly and the warts and all it's the truth guys i tell the truth i was i didn't know much i didn't even you, you get these you know this particular key things where it comes on your phone where you beep in you know to when you get out in front of the the, the house and you go into the houses and stuff and you have this special key that's on your you know, on your phone, and it lets you in. It's pretty doggone cool, and I didn't know how to use it when I first started, but the daggone customer did. Now, the customer that helped, that I worked with, uh, I told people, I told them, I said, look, I'm a brand new salesperson. I was honest with these people, and some people, they were really nice about it. And then I got another couple. They were really nice. They wanted new construction. So we went and looked at new construction, and I also worked over at Adams Homes, They're a, a great couple that gave me a chance to do some in interning by sitting in their models on days off and I sold a house okay guys it was like I had stuff rolling and stuff was going and I was making also I was getting referrals and people were you know coming I was starting like I said you got to get out there you got to do the do and I also called on people I started doing Facebook ads I started getting on YouTube and making sales videos okay because my name is Gary Lee Stanley I am your sales guy I'm your real estate sales guy check out my videos guys go ahead and give me a thumbs up and please subscribe what did what, what did i do in my first year <laughs> as a real estate agent i busted my butt i worked my hiney off and i'm gonna tell you what it was wonderful it was great and see here's the thing we had, we live in jacksonville we live in the south and a lot of these other states like you know uh new york and uh georgia and north carolina and all these california folks started moving in in groves like crazy 
crazy. And it really messed up the, the, the business for us here in Florida. Because you had so many people, you didn't got enough inventory. You got people selling their houses, making money off of their homes. But you had people who were trying to sell their homes, I mean, who got credit and financing that wanted to buy it. They got financed for 200000 250000 And you know what? <laughs> All them houses got bought up. You got four or five feet people deep paying cash and over the price, over what it was actually appraised for and I'm gonna tell you what it knocked out a lot of people who live locally to be able to buy homes and it was tough because I was working with you know people that were that were buyers you know mostly because I'm brand new I didn't know a lot and I had one seller they sold their house up in Georgia and I didn't get a chance to make all of that but I got a referral fee so see you can make money and you also have rental properties and stuff where you can show people rental properties you don't make a lot doing that but for some folks it's gas money it's another way to make a little bit of money but like i said you know the open houses stopped pretty much as soon as you know we had people moving from up north here at the beginning of the 2021 it was like people were coming in such fast people that could sell houses who've been in the business for a while that had a sphere of influence of people who were trying to sell their houses they were making bank they're making bank still to this day and it's kind of like really tough but if you have a customer who's looking to buy a house uh that's in the 350 to 400 to 500 thousand dollar range okay yeah there's quite a few of those but the 200s forget about it i'm telling you why these people came in and paid cash they paid their they paid for them homes they bought up all this inventory and now you know new construction is like crazy the prices of everything wood everything to make a house is going up so it's kind of getting a little bit tough because when you have an influx of people you got to have places for them to live so this is my experience i told you i'd tell you the good the bad the ugly and the warts and all when it comes to you know selling real estate and one of the things you really got to work on is your paperwork because see a lot of times you don't sell as you don't sell a lot and it takes time it's like you don't get no instant gratification when you're selling houses or <laughs> mobile i mean our homes the reason why is because see it's it, you, it it's like there you, you'll get a sale and then there'll be a law because you got to go ahead and keep busy you got to keep working you got to keep selling you got to keep knocking on doors you got to keep getting on youtube facebook and all these instagram you got to let people know hey i'm in the business you got to keep getting your business cards talking to people sharing your information i mean i've literally handed out so many cards and i've reprinted and i got thousands of new ones because i wanted something special and all mine's got a thumbs up because i'm that kind of guy got magnets on the side of my cars to let people know hey i'm a salesperson and i'm always and letting people know that this is what I do for a living. Now, it's like I said, some people, they may come on like gangbusters, but this year, I was doing knocking it out of the park. I mean, it was like before December, before the 21st, or 2021 uh, in January, man, I was kicking butt and, and taking names, but because of the pandemic and all those people having to be boxed up and they're wanting to move to Florida to have some freedom and everything, they came down here and they really just stay, they just took everything they made it uh they just i don't know it made it really rough but if you're out there selling houses and you got people who trust you enough to go ahead and sell your house man my friends are making money honey now slowly but surely things are starting to kind of you know work its way out this way but you've got a lot of people who have old homes and stuff in different particular neighborhoods that they really nobody wants to live in anymore but see those old homes are gems because you can buy them pretty daggone cheap and you can go ahead and fix them up it's just like all those neighborhoods up in new york up in uh, baltimore and stuff that weren't really great neighborhoods and these people fixed these homes up, made them look real good. And now, heck, everybody wants those brownstones. Everybody wants those row homes that are really, really nice. And the same thing's happening here in Jacksonville, Florida. You know, we're a huge city. We got a big old city. You know, we can't tell you where to live because as realtors, our job is to help people buy stuff. We really can't tell you what's a good neighborhood, a bad neighborhood. You have to do your own due diligence. But like I said, a lot of those neighborhoods at one time that people were trying to get out of now they're buying those because they're so cheap and you can go in and you can go ahead and fix the houses up and i've noticed that a lot of yuppies and a lot of people you know starfish or whatever you are buying those houses and they are tremendously making the neighborhoods even bigger and better 
I mean, it's just crazy. And new construction, holy cow. We've got so many different uh, developers. I was, like I said, working with Adams, and I got a chance to learn the business. I got See, I went and talked to some different, uh, different con- contractors and stuff, and there are different companies that will give you the capability to go ahead and sit at their model homes. Now, you can also learn about the MLS. You can take and go visit. I went and visited Doggone Homes and stuff, videotaped them, and they were like mine. People were looking at these things thinking they were my homes and I'll basically all I'm doing is letting people see homes that are for sale you know like I said this year has been a very busy year it's been a little crazy it's been really tough it's been crazy and I'm hoping it'll kind of a little bit slow down with people moving in so our people who live in the state of Florida can buy homes at affordable rates but that's not going to happen anytime soon the whole state of Florida is blowing up Um, It's just amazing. Real estate is fun. But see, if you have a part-time job right now, it would probably be a great idea. If you're brand new, don't quit your daytime job yet. Go ahead and start this out, you know, part-time. And then, you know, once you start getting some sales, because it takes a while. I mean, you get a person who's interested, it could take 30 to 60 to 90 days for you to get your first paycheck. And if you ain't got a significant other, I don't. I don't have nobody. I had to make the money, honey, and have to work a part-time job and work another job just to be able to survive and it can be tough it was rough but i made it through and i'm still working on it i'm not going to give up on the career of real estate because you know there was a bump in the bumps and there was issues because i love real estate and i love selling so do me a favor guys we just had a great conversation today about today about what it was like in my first year to sell real estate it was tough man i had to learn a lot and i'm gonna tell you what it was crazy but i'm gonna keep on going so get out there and sell something but if you ain't asking for the order you ain't selling what do we do what was our topic (laughs) how it was the first year when i was selling real estate it was crazy man it was rough all right